So this is the TU150 from Lian Li. Uh, the chassis hits the right spot at 169 Singapore dollars, that's about 125 US dollars, which makes this premium, small form factor and portable chassis affordable enough for the average Joe to get their hands on. Size-wise, it comes in at 23.7 litres, making it larger than the Streetcom DA2, but smaller than the NCXT H210. If you are hoping for a sub-20 litre small form vector chassis, the TU150 won't fit your bill, but on the bright side, it's large enough for Mini ITX and Mini DTX motherboards, so for those of you eyeing the new ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Impact, this is the perfect chassis for you. On first glance, the TU150 looks similar to the NCASE M1, uh, that's not surprising considering the fact that Lian Li also manufactures the NCASE M1, so you can expect the TU150 to spot the same high-grade aluminum that's on the M1. Now, the TU150 comes in both black and silver brushed aluminum, and the one we have here is black, but I think the silver is ideal and very Apple-esque. Um, the brushed aluminum grain can still be seen very nicely, but fingerprints don't show up that easily as compared to the black, which is a fingerprint magnet. It comes with two side panel choices, a tempered glass side panel that's blacked out at the top to hide your SFX or SFXL PSU, or a windowless brushed aluminum version with ventilation holes by the side for a consistent aesthetic. Now both side panels mount on with a push pin mounting mechanism, giving it that super clean and seamless look. Uh, it comes with rounded feet that are raised off the ground, giving the bottom of the chassis about 10 to 12 millimeters of clearance for better intake. Let's talk about the TU150's defining characteristic, the handle. Now some love it, some hate it, but I think the handle adds an excellent function to your build. What makes the handle especially awesome is that it's recessed, so feel free to keep it hidden if you hate it. Uh, just use a little bit of force and the handle raises up with a solid click and remains there until you push it back down again. On top of that, if you remove the top panel, you can see that the handle is mounted directly onto the steel frame within, so you don't have to worry about whether the top panel can support the weight of your system. Uh, Lendis also make good use of the space here and added an ethic compartment for hiding your excess cables. Although if you're using an SFX PSU without any PSU extension cables, I doubt there'll be much to hide. On the front of the case, we have a power button and one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port, although you will need the special Type-C header on your motherboard if you want to use this port. Now, typical Mini ITX boards don't have that header, but the Crosshair 8 Impact does, so that's another reason to get that board. Uh, moving on, we see pretty standard ports. There are two USB 3 ports, audio jacks and a reset button. Pressing the power and reset buttons do give a solid and comforting click, which I much prefer over squishy buttons. I especially like the front panel on this chassis. Uh, its sides are sloped, which makes the chassis less boxy, but it's also the ideal location for the front intake mesh, and we see one on each side here. Uh, these front intakes aren't filtered, but removing the front panel reveals a single filtered 120mm fan spot, which pays homage to its predecessor, the TU100. I wonder how the airflow is going to be in this chassis with just one front intake, but we'll have to take a look at that in a separate video. There's room for another single 120mm in the rear and two 120mm on the base, but it's important to note that the chassis doesn't come with any pre-installed fans, so you'll need to get those separately. Now this does raise the base cost of the chassis, but I guess it's better than forcing everyone to pay for included fans by default, especially if you're intending to switch them out anyway. Where this chassis really shines is in its support for large tower air coolers. Uh, with a clearance of 165mm, you can even fit Noctua's huge NHD15 or Cryorix H5 with 5mm to spare. Uh, however, if you intend to carry your PC around with you, we'd advise against mounting heavy air coolers as these do add stress to the motherboard. Uh, instead, opt for 120mm AIO, uh, your radiator can mount in either the front or the rear 120mm slot. The slightly larger size of this mini chassis allows for three PCIe expansion slots in the rear, which means you'll be able to fit larger aftermarket RTX graphics cards up to 320mm in length. Uh, these usually come in 2.5 to 2.7 slot heights, so you'll have no issues there, but if you want to mount fans on the bottom of the chassis, you'll need to restrain yourself to using a two-slot card for compatibility. Overall, I think the TU150 hits all the right spots. At 169 Singapore dollars, this chassis is perfect for power users on the go. I think the recess handle is a really nice touch and will allow the TU150 to appeal to more users while adding functionality to the chassis. With room for three slots graphics cards and space to mount a 120mm EIO, there's little more I could ask for. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you liked this video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, hit the bell icon for notifications and subscribe for more videos like this one. Let us know down in the comments what you would like us to check out next and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.